Brothers, we need to stop slandering. It says in Romans chapter 14 that a person that has one particular conviction should not judge a person who has a different conviction. Uh, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 that someone who has one particular gift should not look down or despise someone who has a different gift. Um, we in, the, in our denomination, we tend to look down on people who have different gifts or callings than we do. Uh, it was a little over 10 years ago that I was uh, in one particular uh, church. I've always been a member of the Church of God Seventh Day. Um, at one time, I was visiting. I, I used to, uh, uh, so a little over 10 years ago, I um, had been helping out with uh, uh, a, a non-denominational Sunday church that had just built a new building. And uh, I have experience uh, in sound systems as a system tech. Um, and they had a new digital console and I had experience. And so I uh, was helping them every every other week. I, I would help run the sound. I helped them set up and commission the system. Um, there were, uh, there was one uh, member of the Church of God Seventh Day who left our denomination to join uh, this uh, this church. Uh, and, but after that, the leaders of the Church of God Seventh Day um, would uh, slandered this guy very, very said a lot of really unkind things about him, like, "Oh, the people at this church, they, they're, they, they're not spiritual, and you know their worship is just for show, and they have this performance." And there was a lot of really slanderous things said about this church. Um, uh, but I, you know, I attended both churches, so I, uh, had a little different perspective. I think it's interesting that a church that has, uh, one baptism a year will criticize a church that has baptisms every week. Uh, I think they had, ba I think they had baptisms every week. It may have been once a month, but there was a lot of, uh, of people baptized. There were a lot of lives changed <clears throat> and I'm, I have no pastoral role. I've never been a pastor. Have no knowledge of people's spiritual lives, but I have uh, seen her testimonies of a lot of lives that were changed by hearing the gospel. Uh, but this one particular church, they had, like I said, they had a digital uh, console. They had a top of the line sound system, uh, and that's you know I'm I know a little bit about sound systems, and they did this particularly because they wanted to get people in the door. They had a lot of visitors to this churches. In this church, they had uh, particularly they put in a, a top of the line sound system because they wanted to do Christian concerts because they saw that as an opportunity to get people in the door. Uh, I was there one time when we had Building 429. Um, they had some local bands come in to do concerts. Um, it's a very welcoming church. They didn't get in. They didn't you know preach politics from the pulpit. They didn't talk about you know, Trump this or the wall or the border or any of these political topics because they knew that that would, first of all, it's not, it doesn't, uh, it's not productive. You know, if you talk about politics, it doesn't bring people in. It just, you know, if somebody agrees with you, then you're just talking in an echo chamber. If something dis somebody disagrees with you, then you're just pushing people away. There's a lot of people that visit your church who are not interested in politics or maybe they have, they come from a past where they see things a different way. But our job is to preach the gospel to people, uh, not to preach politics, and that's a that's a mistake that a lot of us make. Uh, but this one particular church, they, um, they had a sister church, or they still do have a sister church in Southern California. One church had been a split off of another church. Uh, and this sister church, uh, it was a bit larger. Um, they had about 5,000 members. And I had a chance to visit uh, this church one time. And I visited and uh, got to take a tour of their of their system. It was during the uh, midweek, not, not during a service. Uh, but this church had not one, but three top-of-the-line digital mixing consoles. Uh, very expensive audio equipment, video equipment. They had a studio. They had a server room, a, a, a studio for video editing and recording. Um, all in all, I think there was several hundred thousand dollars worth of high-end AV equipment at this church. And when I saw that, the thought that ran through my mind was, 
like that's kind of a waste of money and I, I remember thinking to myself with hundreds of thousands of dollars that they spent on this equipment I thought to myself you could drill a lot of wells in Africa for what they spent on all this equipment but as that thought was going through my head I realized that what I was really saying was um, Lord, couldn't this perfume have been sold for a year's wages and the money given to the poor? You know, to say, uh, oh yeah, they could drill wells in Africa for all the money they spent on the sound equipment. And Jesus' reply was, leave it alone. This person has done a good work. Um, so, you know, don't judge another person. Because I realized that this church preached the gospel of Jesus every single week to 5,000 people just in their congregation. But not only that, but they had a radio program and they had a podcast. This was over 10 years ago, so podcasting was kind of a new thing. But they were able to reach people all over the country, who knows, probably all over the world, with the message of the gospel. And ask yourself, how much is that worth? If you spend a half a million dollars on equipment and you're able to reach one person with the message of the gospel that brings salvation, is that worth it? Because in our denomination, I don't think we put a, put a very high value on that. Um, around the same time, I was a member of... Uh, I went to a Church of God General Convention. We have these conventions every two years in July. I was assistant to the sound guy. But this one particular convention, we had a famous guy. We had a, a guy who was a nationally known public speaker. And he was going to do a one-hour talk. And this guy... Um, so, so before the talk, they had already spent thousands of dollars of equipment they rented just for this guy. So the Church of God Seventh Day invested a lot of money to get this guy, plus all the sound equipment or not actually not sound but lighting and um they did a lot of upgrades but just because this famous guy was here and then right before he gave his talk the sound guy was just going crazy he was like make sure that there's new batteries in those microphones and make sure there's an extra microphone just in case something happens we were doing sound checks check this and check that and there was a guy back there who was doing recording um just going crazy because you have to make sure everything's right because we had this famous guy a well-known guy a guy who everybody knows who was going to do a one-hour talk uh, okay that's fine but then we go home to our little country church and the pastor's preaching from the book of romans on how to be saved and a lot of us don't even bother due to a sound check some of us don't even record the sermons because it's not that important to us. I think we should put a little more importance in it, but that's just me because I'm a sound guy. But I'm making this video because I think that we need to not judge other churches, whether it's out of envy, whether it's out of, uh, whether it's out of, uh, it's just a different calling that we have. But let's not judge other people for what uh, this church is doing or what that church is doing because we all have our callings, we all have our unique gifts and uh, let's just be content with that.